I'd like you to close your eyes for a moment. Now, I know we just met, but just humor me, please. Imagine that it's Saturday night. You are at the hottest dance club, the beats are pounding, the bass is thumping. You see people all around you, dancing and jumping and waving their arms. Everyone is facing the DJ. And as the music gets louder, the suspense rises. All of a sudden, the drums kick in and everyone starts to yell. Now, open your eyes. You're out of it. You're back. Is that okay? Is that okay? Several years into my teaching career, I met a student named Stefan. Stefan was a quiet, tall genius. When I say genius, I teach physics. There was not a law of physics that could slow this guy down. But every day, he would come in with his headphones on, blasting electronic dance music. He would sit down in his seat, and oh no, the headphones didn't come off until I said, Stefan, Stefan. He would take them off. He go, what? Class is starting. It was almost like he was in another world in those headphones. And it made me realize that that's where he really wanted to be, not in class. And so I was compelled to find out what is it about electronic dance music that has this student so hooked. So one day, I decided I'm going to play music in my class. So I turned on one of his songs before he came in the door. He walked in, took his headphones off, and kind of looked around. And then our eyes met. <laughs> the look on his face was priceless. He kind of half smiled, was a little confused, but then he started to bob his head to the beat, just like with his headphones on. Now, electronic dance music has grown from when it was born in the city of Detroit, Michigan, as techno 30 years ago, to this global sensation that spans across cultures and surpasses each and every other genre of music globally. It has the ability, through the work of DJs, to compel, invite, and engage young people and people of all ages through the music. And we all have those songs, those songs that take us back, those songs that trigger memories, Music is powerful, and I think that as an educator, if I don't leverage the power that music has and the power that I see this culture of electronic dance music, or EDM as the kids call it, <laughs> then I am missing out on a tremendous opportunity to engage students in learning and get them fired up, as many of our guests here today have shared, that the experience matters. And so, as a lifelong musician and educator myself, who also dabbled in trying to make electronic dance music, by the way, not very good, don't get excited, <laughs> I actually learned it's really difficult. But in trying to do that, as well as being an educator, what I noticed is that the two are very similar. Being a teacher and being a DJ have a lot in common. For example, both have to perform live in front of an audience. Both have to produce original work. Each faces this stereotype that their work is overly simplistic and anyone could push a button or share what they know. And in a world where technology has disrupted both music and education, where at the fingertip touch to a phone or to a tablet, you can get any song or any piece of information that you almost ever could imagine. Neither education nor music can continue to be done in the way that they have in the past. However, here's where I see that DJs do things differently than educators. Here's where I see that techno outsurpasses teaching in reaching kids and in doing things in the digital world. You see, school has somewhat gotten comfortable. Education got comfortable doing things in the pre-digital world. But music has evolved. Techno, electronic dance music, the modern form of disco, but with way more glow sticks, has managed to engage kids all around the world. So what can educators teach teachers? What can DJs teach teachers? Those are two different things. 
I have, for most of my education career, looked to other educators to see what I could do better, and I've learned a lot. But I recently learned that I had to look outside of my own field. And so I found that DJs actually have five different themes in the work that they do that could be lessons for education. The first is that they do two different jobs very well. They are like a composer and a conductor. They have to produce original music to stay relevant and ahead of the crowds because no longer is it the case that music is different from place to place and that your vinyl collection is better than someone else's. We all have access to the same digital music. And in addition to being composers, they also have to be like a conductor and they have to perform live. Educators need to take a lesson. Sometimes I find myself getting too comfortable with the lessons that I have and I don't go out and create something new when I could when I could create something personal to appeal to my audience and engage my students better. The second thing that I've noticed that they do is they compel the engagement of their audience. Much like you saw today, when we had musical performances, we got involved in the crowd. They gave us an easy way to participate and it connected with us emotionally. It helped us to direct all of our actions and awareness in that moment. We were fully present and what we call that is a moment of creative flow. Time stops and that expressive time becomes everything you want to do and focus on. How do we do that in the classroom? The third thing that they do is they promote one another's work. They work collaboratively and cooperatively with their direct competitors, something economists would call coopetition. You might see a musician who uh, collaborates with another musician to produce a new track. We don't always see that in education. The fourth thing that they do is they are constantly changing. The music is evolving, they're doing things differently, not just the same things better. And just a couple of years ago, we saw a great example of this in electronic dance music culture, where a Swedish producer named Avicii teamed up with a soul singer from the United States named Aloe Black to produce one of the most popular hits in electronic dance music ever. It was called Wake Me Up, but when it was first released, the fans and everyone hated it because it sounded like country. They constantly change even when it's hard. And the last thing that I've noticed that they do is they create an epic experience. They create something that is experiential, it's participatory, it's image rich, and it's connected. In a digital world, if we are not creating an epic experience, we, in our incessant impatience, do not want to be involved do not want to be connected. And so for me, it's about creating an epic experience in my classroom to help bring students in and make them feel like Stefan with his headphones on. So that instead of bobbing their head to the beat, they might get with the program of what we're learning. Thank you.